Hi guys, in this video I'm quickly going to show you how to connect the Pilontech battery to your expert inverter um, and show you how the, the cable that we've developed for the battery itself works with ICC. So to do this I'm going to start off by showing you the expert inverter where we've got the Pilontech cable connected and we're going to see how the, the inverter itself sees the battery when there's no monitoring connected to it and then, um, especially when a load is being is present, I'm going to use this kettle over here. And then we're going to connect up the cable and then I'll show you, repeat the test and show you what the results are. So to start off with, I've got an expert inverter here. And you can see it's running in utility mode at the moment. The battery is fully charged. So I'll start by changing over to battery. And here the inverter click. It'll go over to battery mode. There we go. So, and then I'm going to turn on the kettle here with about 600 milliliters of water and I want to show you what happens to the load to the, the moment that that happens. Okay, so there we can see it's running. You can see the state of charge and the battery voltage is immediately dropping as the battery now has to supply the power. So this is what the expert inverter sees when it's talking to the pylon tech battery. Now, Technically speaking, if you look at the pylon tech battery, you'll see the state of charge is still completely full. Yet, the expert thinks that the state of charge has gone down to 61% already and dropping fast. <laughs> so, I'll carry on with this test until we've actually boiled the kettle, just so you can see what it looks like. But you can see the voltage of the battery stabilizing around 48 odd volts, give or take. Um, but imagine boiling one kettle of water and having your battery state of charge drop from 100 down to 55% or less. Kind of terrible. So, if you look at the inverter values, you can see here the battery capacity is being seen as 54 volts and the battery voltage is 47.6. So this is in accordance with what we see on dashboard 2 over here, 47.6 and 53%. So it's pretty much dropping at the same rate while the kettle is busy boiling. So with that in mind, we thought that there has to be something weird going on because you cannot be boiling the kettle, have your battery show as full percent if you look at the little LEDs over there, um, but the inverter thinks that the battery is completely empty. So with that, we set out to design a new cable that can actually get the proper state of charge and proper voltage directly from the battery itself. So the kettle is just about busy boiling. There we go, it should turn off in the next couple of seconds and then I'll show you what this looks like. And then what I'll do is I'll fail the system back over to grid so we can fully charge it and then uh, while I do that, I'll connect up the cable and show you what it looks like. Just so we can repeat the test with the cable connected to it. So, there we go. Kettle should be done in a couple of seconds. There we go. Right. So that's pretty much that. So you'll see the battery will recover to a, a little bit, but that's what the expert inverter thinks is the state of charge on the battery. So now what I'll do is I'll fail it back over to grid. There we go. And then I'll quickly unwrap this little cable that we've developed here and I'll show you what happens um, when we monitor the battery using that cable. So while the battery is busy being charged, I'll quickly do all of that. I'll come back in a sec. Okay, with everything reset, uh, you can see we are back on the utility mode. You can see the battery is charged back up to 53.3 volts. So what I'll do now is I'll configure it for the pylon tech cable. To do that, uh, I've got one end of the pylon tech cable plugged into the Raspberry Pi. The other end of the pylon tech cable, which is the one that we make now, is this little RJ11 port. So what we do with that is on the battery, you look for the console port, which is very important. And this goes into that console port. Not anything else, please make sure that you go into the console port. Right, <clears throat> once it's connected, you can go onto ICC, go into your settings tab, then onto the battery. Uh, what you need to do then is just stop the system from running for the moment so that these grayed out values become available. Select use pylon tech cable and then when you save all of that you'll see it will bring up a status window to detect it and if it's not detected it will give you an error. Uh, if everything works out fine then um, it will just say status ok and then you can go back to start it. You'll see on the dashboard of 2 over here 
There's some new values on here. We've got six cycles. We've got the temperature of the battery. We've got the watts coming in and out of it. The amps as well, the voltage as well as the state of charge. Now all of these settings that you see over here is coming directly from the Pylon Tech cable itself. So this is the actual battery manager built into the Pylon Tech battery that's giving us these values. So with that all in mind, I'll fail over to battery. Okay. So yes, click over. And then I'll repeat the test I did earlier with the uh, kettle and I filled it up with 600 mils of cold water again. So there we turn it on and then I want to show you what happens with the actual battery. Okay, so there we can see it's taking a load of 1900 watts. We're drawing just over 2000 actually at the moment out of it. And you can see the actual voltage and the actual state of charge of the battery. Now have a look at this while it's busy running. Okay. The inverter values states that the battery capacity is 63% and dropping quickly, okay? The actual pylon tech itself says, uh-uh, I'm still at 99%, okay? So there you can see the actual state of charge and the actual voltage of it um, and compare that to what the inverter sees. So the inverter thinks we are, we are at 48 volts and we are at 57% battery capacity. So as the kettle is starting to get hot, you can see we're still at 98% capacity and 48.5 volts. So this is a lot, 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 lot better than we were previously with a, with a test as well. Um, and you can actually see that the battery is maintaining its, its state of charge and its voltage a lot better than it was previously on when it was just connected to the battery itself without being monitored. So this is the reason that we've developed this cable for it. Um, now this obviously allows us the ability to control the inverter, the, the back to grid and the back to battery voltage using the actual state of charge coming from the inverter, so, uh, from the battery, sorry, not the inverter. So what we can do then is we can go back to the battery tab and um, it's obviously still running, so I won't do it now, but we can use the state of charge for control and then set the state of charge back to grid and back to battery voltage, uh, state of charge, based on the actual values that we get back from the battery itself. So the kettle is almost boiling. You can see we've only used 97% state of charge versus what the inverter thinks we have, 54%. Okay, so uh, obviously there's a huge difference between these. Right, there we go. Kettle is boiled. And you'll see that the battery will actually now recover back to its normal voltage and state of charge as well. Alright, so this is why, why we use this. Like I say, you can then go, go into the, the battery portion here and you can say stop it. And then you can say switch over to switch between uh, uh, grid and battery using the proper state of charge. 50% state of charge back to battery when it's 80% state of charge. And this will then actually be the values that you use from your uh, battery itself. So which will not be the, the stupid value that the inverter is. So the only thing you need to do then is to set on your inverter settings. If you're having a single system, you can set your inverter settings over here. If it's parallel, you have to set it using watch power. But you need to then change your back to grid voltage. You can lower this up or down so that the, um, the hardware doesn't switch over, change over to grid before the actual state of charge that we measure from the battery. So let's say for instance you set this at 50% but you see that it doesn't even reach 50% before the inverter fails over. You need to come here and you need to tell it to change over to back to grid voltage, drop it by 1 volt. So you can start off with a high voltage, I'd say 49 volts and then uh, check check what the static charge is when it, when it fails over to your ESCOM and then um, drop it 1 volt at a time until you find a sweet spot and then set that as your back to grid voltage and then off you go. So that's pretty much that. Um, yeah, like I say, that's that's the, the system altogether. Um, enjoy it. Uh, please shout if there's any questions. Thank you. Ciao.